In this episode, I'm interviewing graphic designer, fashion designer, gamer, and pretty much everything else, and model, Amelia Conway. Hi hey everyone, it's Adrian from Women and Beyond and I'm here with Amelia Conway. Hello. So Amelia, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, now, most of the people that I interview are, let's say, multi-talented or multi-passionate. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult for me to introduce them because they do so many things. And I was looking through all the different things that you do. So um, can you maybe introduce yourself and yeah. explain all the different bits and pieces that you have going on? Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess... Where do I start? I guess my main thing I do is I'm a graphic designer. So I studied fashion and textile design at UTS and I graduated there in 2009. And after that, I started working at this textile factory. So I helped design prints and things there. But that's not all I do. So I also um, am studying psychology. So I'm studying that um, online part time with Swinburne. I'm almost finished. I've got two more subjects to go and I'll be completed that. And I'm a big computer gamer. I love that. So um, we'll probably talk about that, that in a bit. That's how yeah. <laughs> what I wanted to talk about mainly, yeah. but we'll get on to the other bit. Yeah. So computer um, game. I also do modeling. Um, I've done modeling for about 10 years. It's, I, yeah, it's just something I love. I just love it. I don't know why. And yeah, I just kind of, I try to go with the flow and like do anything that comes towards me. Like I don't want to limit myself. So if an opportunity comes your way, you're that sort of person who goes, sure, yes, yeah. rather than no. Definitely. And you just came out of Miss Grand Australia as well. Yes. Where you placed third runner-up? Third runner-up, yeah. How was that? Um, that was like really special for me because I always thought, oh, you know, I'd never really tried pageants because I thought it wasn't for me. I thought pageants were for a different kind of girl, like, right. you know, the girl with the great big smile and the you know amazing eyes and like for me I was like I'm not a pageant girl I'm just like a fashion model so you didn't think that you were a pageant girl no not at all like I so getting third runner-up was just amazing like I always had this little dream it was on my bucket list that yeah I wanted to you know get the little tiara and the little sash and I know it seems superficial but for me it meant it was more than just a tiara and a sash it was like yeah. saying you're good enough like you you know, you've earned this kind of thing. And it, it was really nice just to be able to tick that off. Because I kind of, I'd given up that I would ever experience that in my lifetime. Right. Um, it's interesting that you say good enough, because I also read, I think in an interview you did with Star Central, yep. they asked you if you had an autobiography, what you would call it, and you called it worthy. Yeah. Which was an yeah. interesting choice. So yep. why would you have called it worthy? Well, so I'm 29 now, and I've, I feel like I know who I am now, and I'm happy with who I am. But all those years leading up, you know, mm. from 16 onwards, um, they were difficult. I didn't like myself. I didn't think I was pretty. I didn't think, you know, I looked good in a swimsuit. I didn't think anyone would find me attractive, you mm. know, and I, th I don't think that's uncommon. I think the majority of girls feel like that. Yeah. So my life arc so far has been so much about building myself up and, and to the point where I could be on that stage and accept that prize and feel good about it. Um, yeah, so that's why I would call it worthy because that's, I've done so much of working on myself in the yeah. past, you know, 10 years or whatever, to get to a point where, you know, I can, I just, I feel awesome. I, I feel How, really good. Were there any particular things that you did that made, that sort of helped you along that journey sort of in big terms or was it more of a gradual process of accepting who you um, were? It was. Because it's a big deal. Yeah, it's hard to say, like, it's a lot of little things, because I, mm. I used to have quite bad social anxiety to the point where I couldn't, I couldn't go out and see people, I would get really bad panic attacks, um, you yeah. know, with your hyperventilating and shaking and things like that, and that was really scary, like, I had that for a couple of years, and it, I didn't know what it was at first, yeah. um, so a lot of it started with first learning about anxiety, learning how to understand that control that so you know did yoga and meditation and breathing and exercise so that was the first part like mm -hmm. the physiological part and then when that was under control then it was time to start on like the emotional part and for me the biggest thing that helped and it was the hardest thing was doing the mirror work 
and when you stand in the mirror and you, yeah. and you go you look yourself in the eyes you're like you're beautiful you're amazing you're special you're smart because that kind of stuff and how did you react to that the first time you did that oh i just i just probably cried and just like this is stupid what a waste of time yeah. of course i'm not those things this isn't you know this is dumb it's not gonna work yeah um but i think i was smart enough to know that well I don't want to stay here in this place feeling unworthy. Do I want to live my life out feeling unworthy? No, I don't. So I'm like, I need to change it now mm. because I'm young and and move on. Like, so how many how many times with mirror work? You're not the first person actually. Tasha Ross, who I was talking to you about before, she um, apparently I think it was Miranda Kerr. She read Miranda Kerr's autobiography. I think it was her autobiography. And one of those was to stand in front of the mirror. One of her tips was stand in front of the mirror. And basically affirmations in front of the mirror. Yeah. But Tasha said, I asked Tasha and she said it wasn't just once and then you believe it, right? No. I mean, no, you, no. I don't know how many times she took, but how long did it take? Because as you said, when the first time you say it, you probably don't believe it. You mm. probably almost feel stupid saying it. Yeah. You know, when people say, oh, I love myself. A lot of, a lot of people look at you and go, oh, you're full of yourself. Something's wrong, yeah. right? So how many times did it take you or how long did it take you before you started saying those things and going, you know what? Maybe it's true. Um... Definitely, I'd say years, so at least five years. Um, and even now, I, I, it's like a little top up. Mm. Like if, if I start to get these niggling thoughts, like I call it like my, the black vortex. Like if, you start to, if I start to feel like I'm getting pulled into the vortex, I'm like, okay, I need to top, I need to top myself up. And I'll mm. go to the mirror and be like, you know, you can do this, you're smart. Like I did it at Miss Grand, like, you know, before we went on stage and stuff, right. I went into the bathroom, just took a little time to myself. Uh-huh. And I was like, you've got this, you're great. You look great in your swimmers. You know, you look beautiful in your dress. You're going to give a great answer, like that kind of stuff. Because if you don't tell yourself, mm. no one else is going to tell you. It's not It's not everyone else's responsibility to, to tell me that I'm good. And yeah. if you're relying on everyone to come and lift you up, then you're never going to feel content because you're always going to be waiting for other people to tell you. Let's switch tacks yeah. and let's talk about games. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I so I, I want, as I told you, I watched your stream yesterday. That was interesting. Um, <laughs> you, what was the game you were playing? Um, I was playing Alien Isolation. So it was, it was a, it's a horror game. Yeah. So it's based on the Alien movie series, you know, like Ripley and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. so let me ask you this. Um, why do you think, I, I, I know the balance is still gaming is seen mainly as a masculine thing. Yeah. It's changing, uh, but why do you think it's been seen and mainly been, you know, mainly boys doing it? Mm-hmm. And what what attracts you to gaming? Um, so it's, that's it's like a two prong question. So the yeah. fir- I'll answer the first part. Um, I think because t- traditional gender roles say you know girls play with dollies and Barbies and things, and boys do shooting and guns and stuff mm. like that. So most games are violent in nature it involves killing or attacking or that kind of thing so i think just naturally parents are like well i'll give that to my son not my daughter yeah kind of thing I, I think that's kind of why it happens i don't yeah. think it's any like malicious intent no. like you, know, you cannot play because you're a girl it just it's kind of not introduced to a lot of girls for me growing up i had a younger brother um, my brother sam he's four years younger than me and that was our lives was playing Really? games together <laughs> like every every time after school every weekend it was just like him and me playing fifa playing mario playing, i was gonna say mario kart yeah mario kart but that's the, normally the big one mario yeah, kart. yeah um just everything like for hours and hours and hours and it was fun because when we were young i used to be able to beat him but now he's better than me so <laughs> i can't beat him anymore but you stream so does he stream no so his his taken a different path um he's pursuing other things but um so someone suggested to me because i've always played games like my whole life um it was just something i always just did for me and then one of my friends was like oh have you heard of twitch you should stream and i'm just like oh i don't know like i'll just you know i like playing games for me like it's just a personal thing yeah think about it so the curiosity got the better of me and i decided to hook up my little cam and give it a go First time was terrible because it was just... What was the first time like? Well, just like people, um, I wasn't ready for the comments and just like sort of, you know, you're a girl, you're dumb, you can't play, like, show us your tits, you know, things like that. And it was, I was like, oh God, what is this? So I sort of put it away and didn't think about it for a little while. And um, 
But then I was like, no, like that's not fair. Like I shouldn't have to hide from something that I want to give a go. So I was like, yeah, gathered my thoughts. I'm like, all right, toughen up, Amelia. Let's try again. And I thought, look, if anyone comes at me with a nice comment, I'm yeah. going to deflect it with humor. Okay. So if you know someone comes on my stream and they go, Jamie, your tits. I I Google like a picture of like a I don't know like a fat overweight man or something, and I go, here you go. And you know, I just do something silly to kind of deflect it, and I find that. That works quite well and in the process like I just I think I'm like a bit of a comedian well I, I think that I am so I kind of I like making people <laughs> you laugh. make yourself laugh I make myself laugh that's amazing <laughs> yeah 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 so I think for me it's not so much about hey look at me I'm gaming it's more about the interactions and just like having fun and yeah just I like making people laugh well talk talk to us about the interaction and I guess if someone's watching this and doesn't know what twitch and, and streaming is yeah so you play a game, mm -hmm. the viewers get to see your screen as you're playing the game. So they're seeing you, what you're seeing, but then there's also your face there and you get to commentate what's happening. Yeah. So when, as you said, the first time was a little bit traumatic, what, why do you think that's the case that they will, what's that symptomatic of? I mean, you're studying yeah. psychology. Why are they going on and going, oh, you're a girl, you can't game, that sort of thing? Yeah, I think, again, it's one of those unfortunate things in society that's just kind of bred in there and you mm. don't really know where it's come from but I think in young men's culture particularly in gaming culture women are fair game like yeah. we are bottom rung you know even down of a joke you know make a sex joke make a joke yeah. about rape make a joke about can I swear yeah make a joke about yeah. your mum yeah. you know that kind of thing and it's all fun and games ha 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 but it does become a point where it's not funny anymore and it is just hurtful yeah. particularly like you know i read all the comments i see everything they're saying um and there have been some very nasty things yeah. said you know um scary things too like i'm gonna come kill you or i'm gonna yeah. rape you or you're a whore like that kind of thing um and more so than worrying for myself i worry for those young men because i hope i really hope that the other end when they're on their keyboard i hope that it's a joke and i hope that they not they're just trying to get a rise out of me i because I'd be very concerned for a lot of young men if they have intent behind those things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think part of it also, and I mean, you have more experience with this than me, but part of it's because they're anonymous. Yeah. And, you know, when you're anonymous and on the internet, like YouTube is the worst place if you want a self-esteem oh. dive. Put something on YouTube and watch yeah. the comments that people put up. I know you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but it's because they're anonymous, and this is the whole thing with cyberbullying, in my opinion, is that because you're anonymous... You know, you can say things that you probably wouldn't otherwise say and maybe you've been bullied or had a bad experience yeah. so you try and take it out on someone else. Whereas I think if it was in person, like if that person who wrote that comment to you was face to face oh, with they you, wouldn't say it. They, they'd never no say way. it. Right? No way. And that's another sort of a bit of a side reason as to why I also think it's, even though it's hard for girls to be present in areas like gaming, mm. I think it's so important that we keep pushing through because I feel like, you know, so you first log into my stream yeah. and you see a blonde girl, maybe you think she's pretty, maybe you don't, irrelevant. But you see a blonde girl and you go, oh, that's a target. I'm going to start making fun of her. But I feel like I can deflect it with humor or show them, hey, I'm not just an idiot here for you to make fun of. If I kind of like connect with them in some kind of a way, yeah. I feel like that will register with them like, oh, this is a person. It's not just a dumb girl for me to make fun of. And so that's kind of another little sub thing that I want to do with my channel is let people see that, you know, I'm not just a girl gamer. Mm. I'm just a person just like you, just likes to play games. Like, yes, I happen to have two lumps on my chest and I have longer <laughs> hair than you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it, it, it's, it's just, yeah. Do, so, you, do you feel like you've gotten to know some of the people who watch your stream regularly and that they have become now people rather than just usernames and vice versa, they know you? Uh, rather than just, you know, a handle on Twitch. Definitely, yeah. I, I don't know their real names, um, but I've got my little regulars, um, which I know you said you watched on my stream last night. Yeah. So They have some interesting handles. Yeah, they might not remember. Toilet specialist. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that's fine. And, you know, I know what countries they're from and I kind of know vaguely what's going on in their lives. Like, you know, they'll be like, oh, I've got an exam next week and I'm like, I'm oh. asking about that. Yeah. Or one of my longest viewers... Um, the name is <laughs> his name is Tick My Litties. <laughs> okay, so it's not it's not rude, but it's kind of rude. But this is gaming culture, yes. so you know it's all, it's a, it's all a little bit tongue in cheek. Yeah. 
Um, but he's, you know, he's been watching me for about six months and, you know, we chat all the time. Like I know what's going on in his life. I know he's got a daughter. I know. So yeah, like it's nice. It's, it's not completely anonymous. If you. It's oh, almost wow. like you get to be like in the same way a hairdresser almost gets to be a counselor because yeah. you're just talking as you're doing it. It almost sounds like it's the same thing with streaming. It is definitely. And, um, you'd be surprised, you know, even like my stream's small, I've got maybe 400 and 40 followers I think and that's small for like the streaming following but you'd be surprised how many of them message me and they're like oh when are you streaming again mm. we miss you like when are you like you know they just I think they like my energy and they just want I think people like a lot of the time they watch a stream because they're bored and they're lonely and sometimes there's so much shit going on in the world and you yeah. just want to watch someone funny and just want to have a laugh and I'm so happy if I can provide that you definitely don't seem to take yourself seriously. Um, if you stream <laughs> yesterday, last night, I never watched a stream before to do research um, for an interview, but it doesn't seem like you take yourself too seriously. I don't, I don't know what it said about your sense of direction. <laughs> um, she was stuck on the same level. Oh, I, I was watching for two hours. <laughs> no, look, I'm not, I'm not good at games. I'm not like elite gamer with skills you know but i think it's more fun to watch someone who's having fun rather than someone yeah. who's taking it so seriously oh my god i can't do this exactly and i feel like that's i well i hope that my game style is a bit more realistic because um the only gamers that kind of get promoted are like these hardcore gamers who yeah. you know do speed runs and all that kind of stuff and it's like most of us aren't like that like their puzzles are hard <laughs> like, especially after you've had a few drinks yeah. they become harder um what t tell me about is it your mascot? The, what's his name? Bubbles. Bubbles. Oh, Actually, I almost yeah. wish you had him here. Oh, I do. Should what? we get Bubbles in? Where, where, where Special is Special guest. Wait, John. Hang on, I'll get him. Can we have Bubbles in? <laughs> bubbles. Yay, Bubbles! Oh my gosh, Bubbles is a big moment. Oh, God. Bubbles. Make sure he's in the kitchen. Everyone. He, she? This is, it's a, it's a non-gender specific. Very politically correct. Yes. <laughs> Unicorn. That's right. All right. So now we start the interview for real now, oh. and you can introduce. Okay. Hey guys, my name's Bubbles. Um, I'm actually the star of this interview, so we're keen. Um, Adrian, thank you for having me. You may begin. I don't, I don't know why you're laughing. I've never interviewed a okay. unicorn before. All I remembered last night is one of your viewers asked you to punch him in the eye and you said, no, I've done that before. It actually hurts. It does because they're plastic. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it it's does. Got glass. It has glass eyeballs. Okay, so um, what's the story behind, behind, behind Bubbles? Yeah, so I'm, I'm glad that we're getting to the hard-hitting questions yeah. of the interview. I like how you just automatically yeah. go like this. Um, I don't know, like, it, I think... It's a boring story, but um, John and I were up at the shops one day, and I think I was just... John's your husband. Yeah, John's my husband. Yeah, my amazing husband. And I think I was just having a bit of a bum day. I was just feeling a bit down, and we walked past this shop, and, like, Bubbles was in there, and I was just like, oh, my God, that's so cute. Love but, that first sight. Yeah, but I was like, oh, but, you know, I'm an adult. I can't <laughs> have things like that. It's a waste of money, da, da, da. Anyway, before I knew it, John had, like, gone over the shop, and, like, he'd picked it up, and he was like come on I'm gonna get this feeling yeah. like, oh my god okay <laughs> I'm still very much a kid and I think like I want to just enjoy that for as long as I can yeah so that's why we got bubbles well there's no reason yeah. to grow out of that yeah so how long have you had bubbles for um like probably since yeah maybe like six months I think yeah. And I love how your streamers know about bubbles so it bubbles has become a feature of your stream yeah. as much as you have I figure like like I'm not you know I'm not a comedian in it or anything but I noticed that sometimes you know uh, you know when they used to do, like stand up with ventriloquists yeah. and things like that and they sort of interact with the the dummy yeah. I, I always find that humor quite fun so that was kind of the idea behind having him as a character in there yeah okay well now that you've now that we've made <laughs> bubbles so you, we've talked about we talked about gaming we've talked about the pageant that you just came out mm -hmm. of and you've alluded to all the bits and pieces in your life so what, what's the priority at the moment or how do you decide what to take on? Because it sounds like I, I also saw on your YouTube channel that you can do. I was actually going to ask you this. Mm. You can do accents. Oh, you saw that. I did. Yeah, I, did yeah. I did my research. I was oh, going to get you to do the interview in yeah. an accent. <laughs> I found it off putting. But do you act as well? Um, so that's a good question. So that's 
where I want to head next. Right. Um, so I've been going, I've done a few auditions. Um, I haven't got any parts yet, but I, according to the directors, I've always been like neck and neck. Mm -hmm. They were like, it was going to be you or this other person. And I was so close to picking you, but we went with the other one, but we might use you in the future. Yeah. So that, that's, I'm happy with that for just starting out. Yeah. Um, I have no formal training. But if we, if we talk about, well, that's amazing that you can do the accents that well with no formal training. Must be all the practice you had on stream. <laughs> but I mean, if you talk about, so we talked about textiles and I've seen you design dresses and obviously you, you yeah. know what you're doing there. It's not yeah. just a hobby. You've almost finished psychology. Yeah. Modeling, I, again, reading the interview that, you know, your modeling career is amazing for someone who doesn't just do modeling. Then there's a pageantry, there's a streaming. Now there's acting. So does your mind, when you think about what you have to do in a week, just go, oh my God, like that? Or do you have a, like, do you have the long-term vision? Is like, I'm going to try this and then that and then that and then that. Or is it just like drink out of a fire hose, see what comes your way? Yeah. Um, so it used to be a bit chaotic because I, I wanted to do everything and mm. I didn't give myself a plan. But you probably, I don't know if you saw when you came in, I've got a goal board up there and it and it's, I look oh, at that. That's the one that I saw, yeah. Every day. And that, that um, I just started doing that a couple months ago. So I pick one thing that I want to focus most of my energy to. So at the moment I've got up there um, being a short film. So that's sort of where, that's like my main goal that I kind of want to yeah. focus on at the moment. But I'm still going to keep doing modeling. I'm still going to keep doing well in my study. I'm still going to keep doing my job and, and my gaming. Yeah. But I suppose if push came to shove and I had to choose one over the other, I would choose something that led towards acting. Right. Yeah. So I'm looking actually, I'm going to, um, enroll in these improvisation classes. Um, it's like an eight-week course, so that's coming up soon. So I'm gonna You're going to enroll with with Bubbles, and no, Bubbles is already really good. He doesn't need any more any more training, do you, Bubbles? It's yeah. Very, very good impromptu. Yeah. <laughs> but what about the psychology? I mean, you you studying psychology. Are you planning on making a career out of that as well? Yeah. So with the psychology, there was a reason I started doing that was because. Um, well, I, I, were we speaking about I had bad anxiety? Mm. For, so I used to have really bad anxiety. And I thought if I learnt more about it, that might help me to control it. So that was kind of why I chose that path. But I've actually done, been doing really well in the psychology, like better than I ever did in my fashion degree. Right. So I think I'm quite, I have like an affinity for it. I would like one day to be a psychologist, but I think I'm still very young. I'm only 29. Mm. I think I need a bit more life experience before I, I would be worthy sure. to tell other people how to live their lives. So it might be like a long-term goal. Like if I get my bachelor degree now and then maybe later take it further, like maybe when I'm like 40 or 50 or something like that. So what, what yeah. of talking about 40, 50, that seems so, so far away, but where do you see yourself in five, 10 or, or 20 years? I mean, um, you've got your goal board that's kind of like short term. Yeah. But where, where would you ideally like to be in 10, 20 years? Um, hmm. You've got so many things going on. I know. It's a tough question. I, I sort of, I guess I don't want to define it too much because I like to sort of say a bit loose and go with what comes up, but, um, I'd like to be doing a bit more acting. Okay, let, like let's say ideal world. I'd love to be in a, um, in a, I don't know, TV mm -hmm. series or something like that. Yeah. That would be awesome. Or um, I'd love to see some of my modeling work in like the pages of Vogue or something like that. That would, that would be amazing. And uh, if we're talking 10, 20 years time, I'd like to actually be in a, because I'm in an apartment now. I'd like mm. to actually own a home and have a garden and, if you have a dog running around the back. In and, Sydney, that will cost um, you an arm and a leg. Yes, it will. <laughs> but, no wonder yeah. you've got so many careers going on because <laughs> you want a house in Sydney there. Yeah. yeah, so that would be, yeah, like I don't have like, I don't think I have ridiculous goals, but um, I think they're still achievable. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's a typical week for you like? Do you have a lot of spare time? It seems, no. So... Do you have any spare time and what do you do with it? And what's the life in the week of yeah. you like? Um, thank you for asking that question. And I, okay. I really hope my friends watch this because I feel terrible. That's one thing about being me. I have so many ambitions for myself. My beautiful friends sometimes get put to the wayside. And, you know, there's my true, true friends. They get it and, yeah. and they're there for me when... Um, when I can be with them. But yeah, my days are busy, so it's like wake up, 
I go to the gym in the morning, then I obviously work nine to five, then I'll come home and I'll do some uni work, mm. um, maybe do a stream. And then that's pretty much the same, like Monday to Friday. Friday night, I always do like a long stream. Yeah. Saturday, I try to spend some time with my husband. <laughs> and I'm intruding up. on that now. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> Damn it. Um, and then Saturday night, I do a uh, Dungeons and Dragons role playing group. So I go to that, which wow. is really fun. Yeah. Um, and then Sunday is probably we're seeing some family or we'll see some friends. So tomorrow right. we've got John's sister in law coming over and her kids. Lovely. So, and that's like every week, it's always full, but I, I just think life's so short. Like I want it to be full. I know. Well, on that yeah. note, t- tell me about the Dungeon and Dragons thing. So do you yeah. cosplay? Yeah. So oh, okay. So let's, let's talk about that as well. Yeah. I'll show you my, t- I'll tell you my, um, my player's handbook. So if anyone who plays Dungeons and Dragons, this will make sense to you. Probably won't. I have That's never true. played Dungeon and Dragons, but I I know of it. It's super nerdy, but I love it. It's so good. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's amazing. You do so many. Is there any part that we've forgotten? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think we've, we've covered so many. Oh. I mean, the people that I normally interview have multi, you know, this, but you're like done everything. I don't know. Oh, I used to DJ. I used to <laughs> DJ. That's what I was going to say. You've got a keyboard yeah. there as well. Yeah. So you DJ. Used you used to. to. Used to yeah. You mentioned on stream that you wanted to get a deck, just maybe not to take DJing back up, but just for your just own. Just for home, yeah. yeah. Well, that's how John and I met. We we met, um, I was, another thing, I'm going to sound like so arrogant, but like I was used to do like podium dancing at um, home nightclub and John used to DJ there and that's how we met because I was dancing, he was DJing and then we kind of, of met course. backstage and yeah, so we, we DJed together. History. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, but music is a big thing of our relationship. That's a key component of it, definitely. Yeah, and you mixed, um, so you posted on Facebook, you posted a, a remix that, that you did. Mm. So what sort of music um, taste do you have? So I'm, I absolutely love trance, progressive trance, just anything chilled with like an awesome beat um, and uplifting, uplifting melodic trance as well. Right. That's my favorite. Nice. Yeah. Okay. I think we've covered everything. I think so. I don't know if there's anything else. We, we may run out of space on the memory card know, before, we, <laughs> before we cover everything. But thank you so much. It was really nice to have the opportunity to talk about everything I do because I feel like sometimes people don't understand why I'm always so busy. It's so, difficult though, you know, yeah. when your Instagram bio has what, like a hundred and something characters to describe you yeah. and, and that. It's, it's all, and we want to put people in pigeonholes. Yes. And this is one thing that I've realized with the people that I interview anyway none of them fit in a pigeonhole. Mm-hmm. So, you know, oh, you're a model, so you must be like this. Well, actually, no, you do this. And, oh, you're a pageant girl. You must, no, it's, it's interesting to me that, you know, people have this idea, like as you said, they switch onto the gaming stream, they see blonde, pretty girl, and they go, oh, you must be like this, you're fair yeah. game. Yeah. And a lot of my interest is in just going, well, actually, you know, she's not just that. She also does this, does yeah. this, Yeah, well, I think this. that's why I was so happy when you wanted to come and talk to me because... um. And interrupt husband day. Yeah, because I feel like I have a lot to offer, like a lot to share. And I hope that maybe a young girl will watch this and go, hey, I can I can do all that too. You know, mm. Because that's what got... The reason why I do all this stuff, because when I was young, I remember I was talking to a girl and I think she was like one of my sister's friends. She was like, oh, you know, I just came back from here and I'm studying this and I went here and da-da-da. And I was like, whoa, I want, I want to be like that. I want to do all those things. Well, that's amazing. So you can remember that singular moment where you yeah. saw someone who was doing amazing things and you went, I want to do that too. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so if someone wanted to reach out to you, so the social media, what's the best way to contact you? Um, probably, uh, and I would love people to reach out to me. That would be amazing. Um, probably just Instagram or Facebook. Just send me a message. I'm, I'm super friendly. Um, and yeah, I'll have a chat. I'll put yeah. the links below. Yeah. <laughs> or I'll catch you on your gaming stream. Yeah. <laughs> All bubbles. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, so we always wrap up with the same 10 questions. I don't know. Do, do, do you know what the questions are? No. No, okay. Um, so we'll go into them and whatever answer you give is perfect. So, number one, what is your favorite word? Oh, fabulous. <laughs> that caught you a bit off guard there, fabulous. Number two, what is your least favorite word? Um... Judgment. Fair enough. Okay, question three. What turns you on spiritually, creatively, intellectually, or just in general? 
like probably learning, learning new things. Yeah. And what about what turns you off? Like off life, kind of thing. Just in general, yeah. or with people. Um. Again, I'd have to come back to judgment. Someone stereotyping me. Oh, you're a this. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. What sound or noise do you love? Oh, God. I don't know. I never thought about that. Um, probably John in the, like, when he's in a cute mood and he goes, baby. <laughs> I like that. What, does he do a silly voice or yeah, does he start singing? Silly, okay. Silly All right. Um, does he have a mascot? Does John have a mascot? Yeah. No. Just if he's doing a silly voice and you can oh have a friendship goodness. between two mascots. A really good idea, actually. I'm going to steal that. <laughs> okay, what sound or noise do you hate? Um, the construction. Yeah, well, the construction, definitely. Probably, um, I really hate it when I hear grown men yelling and fighting. It just makes me feel sad and angry. Like, Particularly, you know, when you see road rage and they'll get yeah. out of their cars and they'll slam the door and they're like, oh, what are you doing, yeah. mate? It just makes me feel really anxious. Yeah, yeah. I, I can understand that one. Yeah. Okay, here's a question that everyone wants to know. Number seven, what is your favourite curse word? Oh, gosh. Um, f- <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you paused because you didn't want to say it or because you had to give it some thought. <laughs> 90% of people say the yeah, F word. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, number eight. What profession, this would be a hard one for you, what job or profession other than your own would you most like to attempt? I guess I would love to, if I could have taken my modelling on full time and done the whole international mm-hmm. thing, that would have that would have been awesome, but I think right. it's a bit late for that now. Cat walks around the world. That would have been Paris, amazing. Milan. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not tall enough though. Really? I'm 175 and you've got to be like 180, I think. Oh, so. Some stuff by five inches. You could do it though. You're tall enough. I, if you're past it, I'm very past it. <laughs> okay, what profession or job other than your own would you definitely not like to attempt? Um, hmm, that's a tough one. Probably I wouldn't want to do anything in like finance or, you know, stock trading and things like that. It just feels like... Yeah, not very wholesome. And yeah. There's no sort of tangible... Yeah, it's all numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, final question. If God exists, what would you like to hear him or her say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Well, I'm not religious and I, I believe when we die, we die. So um, I think... I'm sorry if I offend anyone, but um, I, I don't trust my life to somebody else. I'm in charge of it. So when I die, I die. No one will say anything. (laughs) You won't hear anything because you'll be dead. I'll be dead, exactly. On that bright, cheery note. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And thank you, Bubbles. Thank you, Bubbles, yeah. You can catch Bubbles every Friday night on my stream. You have an Instagram account soon. Okay, thank you so much for watching and speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.